Good evening, everyone. I just wanted to say hi and check in and just say how grateful I am to all of you who've been on this page and everybody who's been messaging and participating. It's super fun. It's super learning and I've had some really cool questions and one of the most recent questions was about dealing with psychic children. And I thought that was so great, so great of a topic. I'm going to write an article about it, but I wanted to just share a couple of things real fast. If you have a child that's psychic, there's a few do's and don'ts. And I'm just going to mention a couple here that I personally have experience with. First thing that you should do is believe them. Don't make them feel awkward or strange. Even if you know, like you know that it's an overreaction, that they're, the monster under the bed is their delay of going to bed for bedtime. You know that they have to go to the bathroom all of a sudden, and then they, they want to drink a water, and then all of a sudden there's a monster under the bed. That's different. And still, as a parent, there's usually a defining factor of what's going on underneath all of that. Now say that you know for a fact that your child experiences clairvoyance, that's a clear vision. If he sees, she sees things such as spirits, or maybe your child's empathic. They, they can feel a, a spirit in the house or, or feel an energy being. Then my first do is believe them. Anytime they tell you a story, believe them. Ask questions. Participate in it. You don't have to ask questions that'll bring up fears, but ask questions, how did it make you feel? What is it like to be able to see things? Did you feel fearful at all? Explore them rather than worrying so much about the external entity in the space. You can deal with that as an adult later. However, your primary concern should be that child. First of all, believe them. Build them up in that and find out how they feel, how they're processing this information that they're getting in their body, whether it's clairvoyance or they're hearing something or they're feeling something. Find that out first. Be their parent. Explore them. Study your child. And do this with compassionate words. Like, how did that make you feel? Would you like to come sit and tell me about it? Come here. Let me hold you. Let's talk about this. If you approach your child with this way, it creates that safe space so that they aren't shutting down inside out of fear or loneliness or disconnect and amplifying those energies in their own body. And the don't discredit them or disbelieve them. And that means don't say, oh no there's not, oh knock it off, oh you're lying, oh stop it. I'll say that in my dealings with most adult psychics, most adult gifted empaths and intuitives, they shut their gift down when they were a young child because they were at odds with feeling or seeing these things. And adults made them feel like the odd one out or feel strange or unwanted. And so, they literally shut that gift down and lived in that fear and that turmoil because you can't truly shut it down permanently you just hold a blind spot to it so all those emotions and those senses and everything that you're feeling have probably gone your entire adulthood now as a child you're obviously not cognitive enough to really understand that process so you don't have that cognitive ability to really dissect or self-study to help yourself unlock those doors that you lock. So as a parent of a child who's psychic or a guardian, don't discredit them. Do believe them. That's number one. And there's many other things that you can do to set yourself up for success. With, I know the number one thing is that when a child is experiencing this, fear comes up. And it may not be even with the child. It may mostly be with the adult. The adult gets spooked like, oh my God, why is my child talking to the TV? Or why is my child seeing a being in the house? Or why, you know? So as an adult, take a nice deep breath. Exhale before you respond to your child. 
remember to ignore whatever it is that they may be seeing and ask the child tap in with them how they feel tap in with them to see how they are processing what they're experiencing and see if you can't help them in supporting them by holding that space that container for them to openly and honestly express all the stuff sometimes it's through the miscellaneous rantings that we can actually begin to form cognitive sentences to describe and define and articulate what we experience especially as an empath when you're impressed with energies when energies literally impress upon you and enter your body and you can maybe mix mistake those for your own you don't know where to separate as a young powerful empath you can get very confu confused and so you holding your emotions and holding your space is vitally important for them it will empower them it will create a safe space for them to be able to express these things now, after you put them to bed or console them, or even if you have to console yourself, then when they're asleep, get out your sage, sage your house, assault your doorways, get your crystals, whatever your practice is to make you feel safe and comfortable, then do that. There's a time and a place. I promise you, if there's a feeling of something watching you, that feeling of something watching you isn't going to jump out and bite you. You can take care of your child first, okay? And that is important it's not needed it is important yes it is needed too I'm saying that it's important first do believe them don't make them feel at odds for having the experience and be the parent and show up and hold space for them so anyways with that I just wanted to share that I've had a lot of questions about that lately and I just want to say I love you I hope you're having a fantastic night ciao